Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and we're back with lesson two of our Let's Edit tutorial series with Avid Media Composer. And in this lesson, we're talking about creating your first project. Now we're gonna keep our intro short. I just wanna remind you that if you find this tutorial useful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it across your social media channels. All right, keeping that intro short, let's now jump into Media Composer and create that first project. All right, so once you launch Avid Media Composer, you will be brought to the project selection and creation window. Now, before I get rolling talking about project creation and selection, I want to talk to all current Media Composer editors uh, about a great little, I'm not going to call it a feature, a great little thing that most of us overlook, uh, but it's actually very beneficial. And that is the What's New button. And what I like about the What's New button is that when you click on it, you'll actually be told what is new in any particular version of Media Composer. Now, you'll know that we don't have access to any of these previous versions, but what is great about this window is that if you happen to be updating from, let's just say, 2021 point, you know, 2021.9, and you're coming to the most current version, you can always twirl this down, get a little read on what's new in here, as well as any updates that have happened since that version you're currently working on to the most current version. This is actually super helpful. It means you don't have to go online looking for any of the what's new documents. You can actually find it all right here at the project selection and creation window. All right, so let's come back to where it says select project. Now what Media Composer is assuming right now based on its current position, basically at the project's selection window, is that we want to select a project to work on. Now, chances are if you're new to Media Composer and you launch it, this is not what your window is going to look like. It's going to look something more like this. Basically blank. It's going to be nothing in here. You're going to be creating a project from scratch. Now, this is where the big decision comes into play. Actually, a couple big decisions are going to come into play uh, once we're at this point. The first big decision we have to make is where do we want this project to go? And you'll remember in our previous lesson, which I'm linking to in the notes below, it's a decision you have to make based on your workflow. And for me personally, even though, you know, 99% of the time I'm working on my own system, if there's ever a situation where I need to grab my laptop and run out the door, I want to make sure I can just unplug my external hard drive, take it with me, plug it back in, and start working right away. I don't want to have to get into copying this project, worrying about this, worrying about that. So this is where the decision comes into play. Now, two options that you have are local decisions, basically local options where you want to put this project. The first one right here you'll see is in my user folder inside of basically it's the Kevin Documents Avid Projects. Now, of course, on the Mac, this is going to work very similar. You'll have a public folder. You will have a private folder based on your login. All right. Now, in this case, if I put a project in here or projects in this location, nobody else that logs into this computer will have access to them. So keep that in mind. The next option you have is right here. See users public documents shared Avid projects, meaning that inside of the public documents folder, which everybody has access to when they log in, basically as separate users, you'll be able to see the projects located inside of this folder as well. Now, this doesn't help you in a situation where you gotta grab a drive and run out the door quick. It's still local to this computer where I wanna have it local to an external hard drive that I can unplug and run away with at any time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to basically create a new folder on an external drive. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna come onto my Media E drive. You'll notice I actually already have a folder called Avid Projects, but what I'm gonna do is create a new folder, and I'm just gonna call it appropriately enough, New Avid Projects. Like such, and what I'm gonna do is simply navigate by clicking on the folder icon to that folder inside of the E drive. There's New Avid Projects. I'm gonna say Select, and of course the folder will be empty because I have not created a new project here yet. Now, if I wanted to call up a project that I actually already have on the system, no problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna head back to the E drive to that Avid Projects folder, and I'm gonna say Select Folder. Once I do, I now have access to all of the projects that are on this drive in this folder. Now, something that's important for me to point out what I'm gonna do, just come back to the folder level here, is that when I come into Avid Projects, this folder, you're gonna notice that I have all the different projects here and inside these projects will be obviously the bin, the project, the settings, and et cetera, et cetera. 
What's important to keep in mind is that when Media Composer is actually looking at this Avid Projects folder, it's actually scanning each one of these folders to see if it actually sees this file here, the project file. By it seeing this file, that's what's gonna make it appear in our project list here. I've seen a lot of people come in and when they wanna open projects, they're actually coming into the root level of the actual uh, not the root level, the specific folder of the actual Avid project, right clicking on the project and launching it that way. Don't get into launching projects that way. It can get confusing. You could accidentally delete that. Then you're creating new projects and it just can become a really big thing. So when you are creating projects, always create it from the project selection and creation window so that you know your projects are being created correctly every time. Now, speaking of creating our first project, let's go about doing that. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna ignore user profile for now. We're gonna talk about user settings, actually not in the next lesson, but in the lesson after that, because it's very important that you're gonna have different user settings based on whoever's working on the system so you can set up things like export presets and keyboard settings and things like that based on the user. So, but like I said, we'll talk about that in an upcoming lesson. Don't worry about that for now. What I do wanna do is head on over to new project. Now, something that is very important for me to mention before we move forward is that what we're doing here is we're not creating a project based on the media that we're going to be working with. What we're doing is we're creating a project based on the type of file that we want to output in the very end. Now, what's also important to keep in mind is that the only thing that will be locked into your project that you cannot change once you create it is your frame rate. So make sure you pick the correct frame rate that you want to output when you're done. And keep in mind, for the most part, if you're doing stuff for the web, stuff for television, chances are 1080p 23976 is going to be the base project that you're going to create. And then you can switch over to UHD if you need to, or, you know, different types of projects if you need to. Um, but basically you're going to want a progressive output when you're done. And for the most part now, uh, for television, feature films, uh, even for the web, 23976 uh, progressive frames per second is really what we want to choose. Now, what we've done here is we've told Media Composer where we want our project to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this our first project. Now, you'll notice that you do have the option to let Media Composer choose the frame rate and raster dimension of the first clip added to the timeline. Please don't ever do that. Ever, 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 ever. <laughs> uh, it's just something you don't want to run into in case you bring in the wrong clip and drop that into your timeline. Then the frame rate and the raster dimension is set and you don't want to be getting into that. What I normally just do is say, okay, what do we want to output? What are we delivering to the client? Okay, if it's 23976, you could even get into you know 60p if you wanted to. You can come right down here, 60p right there if you needed to, 30p. You have a whole bunch of options in here based on the output that is required. Now, we're gonna leave everything else the way that it is here, except for one thing. And this is one thing that I normally recommend to people when they're gonna get rolling. Just because you're creating a project that is 1080p, meaning 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high, chances are, with the web these days, you may be required to create a Instagram file, a Facebook story. So you might need files to be 1080 by 1920 vertical video. You might need files to be square 1080 by 1080. So what I like to do is to give myself those raster dimensions before I get rolling so that I'll have access to them inside the project after the fact, if in case I do need them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to where it says manage presets. Now what's important to keep in mind is that once you do this the first time, it'll be set and you won't need to do it again. Now you'll notice that I actually already have one here. So I'm just gonna delete it for right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a new one. We're just gonna say add and I'm simply gonna call this square. And I'm gonna give the height a height of 1080 or pardon me, the width of 1080, the height of 1080, and you'll see the aspect ratio is set to one to one. Now we always want this to match really the general frames per second that we're gonna be working with. So if for the most part I'm working in 23976, I'll create one of that. Keep in mind, if you are switching between different frame rates and projects, you're gonna to wanna to create one of these for each of the different projects that you are working in based on frame rate, all right? What I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna create one here. I'm just gonna say add, I'm gonna call this vertical. 
and it is going to be 1080 wide by 1920 high. All right, and you'll see it's 1 to 1.78, again, 23976. This is vertical video, and at this point, if I needed to create another one, in some cases you'll have 4 by 5 aspect ratios as well. I could add that in here as well, but what I'm going to do is simply say OK, and if at any time, you know, in the future, I've already got 50 projects, I'm working, I might need another different preset, I can always simply come in at any point and say manage presets and add or remove whatever ones in here I might need or might not need anymore. So what I'm going to do now that I've basically given my project a name, I've chosen the format and the raster size and the frame rate, I'm basically going to say create and Media Composer is going to create that project for me and it's going to launch basically the Media Composer interface. Now what I do also want to show you now is that if I come back in here and I come back down to Media 1 into our new Avid Projects folder, you'll see Here's our first project with our first bin that was also created for us right here. Basically all set to go. And like I said, at any time, if I need to unplug this drive and take it on the road with me with my laptop, I can easily do that because we've created it externally instead of internally. All right, that's going to wrap up this lesson for today. And I want to remind you, first of all, actually, I want to thank you for tuning into this tutorial. Second, I want to remind you to please like, subscribe, and share this video across social media if it's helped you at all. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.